everybody, my name is Jessica Holyfield. I'm a professional dancer, professional dance choreographer, and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States. And we're taking a look at Itzy's Born to Be Dance practice. This is my very first Itzy reaction I'm ever doing on the channel. I have seen excerpts of Itzy, I've heard some of their songs. I don't believe at this point in time I have ever seen an entire Itzy dance choreography or heard an entire Itzy track. So this is going to be a very, very fun introduction because it appears that we have lots of dancers that are going to be utilized in this dance practice, which makes me very excited, with, especially with uh, my dealings with Mega Cruise and understanding what makes them so cool. I'm looking forward to this. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. Before I say anything, there's one thing I need to look up because that's going to determine how I refine some of my notes. Please hold. Okay, so I've looked. What I what I looked at was that I only see four, but when I look at Itzy's profile, there's five members, and my gut was telling me there were five. And I could tell by some of the formations that there were five members, but we only see four here, which means either something happened to one of the members or all that information I just looked up was wrong. Anyway, but I freaking love this. If 2023 is the year of anything, it is the year of Mega Cruise and K-pop because you got Song Gong by Seventeen. Just from what I've reacted to alone, Song Gong from Seventeen. You've had Megaverse from Stray Kids, Super Shy from New Jeans, and now I'm seeing it here with. Itzy born to be with just the sheer mass number of people. I can even include crazy form by AT. So now I got I have five right now within just from within my 2023 range of choreographies I've looked at. That's wild. Uh, now am I here for it? Absolutely. 
Let me also say this, if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I hope that I am able to be a positive contribution to the realm of Itzy. I love doing analysis, especially on choreography, and that's what I'm about to do, is break through the entire routine, kind of describe what makes it look cool, what makes it look a certain way, are there any suggestions on how to refine it, make it look a lot better, things like that. And um, and I will say at the forefront, I've reacted to the Street Fighter series, and this really gives me the energy of One Million's Mega Crew from Street Woman Fighter Season 2. I think it's because of two elements, no, three elements. The overall aesthetic of the track does have that kind of um, aggression and power, but also more of that feminine, um, that feminine uh, soprano bass tone like what we saw from the mega crew also the sheer number and some of the elemental factors within it with some of the tutting peeling a lot of the dynamics are very similar and the number of people and thirdly they shot it at 1 million so that's those are my three really big indicators of what gives me that energy um am i saying that in the form of plagiarism no i'm saying it as a sense of admiration i love being able to see this utilized for an actual k-pop group and not just represented on a survival show Let's get into it. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do a 0.75 on this, which means it's going to be a long video. Buckle up. Here we go. So from the beginning, I love how they set this up. It's very obviously we're about to reveal something because all of them are covering up at the very top. And we notice that we have four. So my first note is I'm very curious if we do have five members, which I is a very safe assumption. And some of the formations, like I had mentioned, show that there is a placeholder for a member. We only have four openings. So I find that to be interesting how once we get our fifth member back, uh, what's going to happen with our with our fifth? Are they going to have an opening of some kind? I don't know. But this looks really cool. I love this beginning. And having just that burnt. They peel it down, peel it down. And then the other side, they reopen. So they have that, that the beginning with the grasping of the hands, but notice there's an opening, so it allows hands to peek up through. Very subtle, very effective, I love it. It's like something sprouting, they melt back over. Notice now that we have them have this as a fixed point, using their hands to create more depth on the levels, and I really like that choice. That was a cool choice, born to be born. And then I feel like we have one of them is not seen yet. And then she comes up. So there's a, even another chance where we, there was a placeholder for that born to be, born to be like that little bit. There wasn't anything happening. Could be because of that. So I love the energy here of them all running forward. Now having everybody drop in the cleanliness of the hand. So a lot of what we're seeing is tutting which is um, inspired by Egyptian, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. So, so it's like King Tut, so it's called Tutting King Tut. Uh, and also you would see it derived from popping in America. And now it's kind of has its own pocket community and culture and its own integration, innovation, just like waving in America, in American context is what I really speak through. And so whenever I see this here with Tutting, it's be very mindful of angles, obviously, and making sure that everybody has the same degree of execution all the way through. Through, we don't have any of these duck hands and we don't have a hyper extension because that can affect the overall line of what anger you're trying to get. So from the forefront, we do notice with some of our dancers, we do see a bit of overbending of the arms. Could be because of a shoulder flexibility thing. Some of them also have really high shoulders. Some of them have them low and some of them have them a little bit higher that also can demonstrate based on your flexibility in your shoulders. Some people are looking up all the way committing with the eyes and some are looking up but looking forward you can see that that does make a subtle difference in the overall look and commitment and confidence of your dancers now looking here on my lower group i love having the arms up nice and tall because it allows this group to appear lower and you're showcasing a bigger dynamic you have one of your dancers here love the fact that we have our itsy members because remember i don't know any of them very first time I'm analyzing, but it was very clear to me based on the thoroughness of making sure your dancers were in white and your performers were in black. It makes it very clear where you want your performer to be. Right here, I love how she's up. Everybody else noticed that some of the heads are really looking to the side and some are tilting over. Can that affect how it appears? Yes, because if everybody's supposed to look to the side, but some are looking to the front, 
by having everyone look to the side, notice how much more her face stands out in the overall line in comparison to everybody else. But because we have others looking to the front, it kind of makes, not questions, but it doesn't make this feel as refined as it could be. If she was the only person out of every single human in that room looking forward, you would be able to clock her even if she wasn't wearing black. So that would be my first initial note to make that a little cleaner. Clarify where the head goes because that is where your body's going to respond. Also notice some of them have it drop down a little bit and some have it down to the side. And they drop it down. I love that. And notice how we draw. Oh, I'm missing. There's so many details in this and we're only about 14 seconds in. Guys, I am, we're going to be here a long time. This is so fun. Okay. Okay, here we go. So I missed the second angle. By going here, notice that whenever they built out a repeated groove, we have to make sure the range of the arm matches because it keeps it clean. Especially if you have a really stagnant or staccato with a reverb kind of texture happening from your like your, your opening positions before this has that lotus feel. That's another thing I'm going to say that I saw from our uh, 1 million mega crew. And notice that this is another big thing. These top people are not matching. That could have really helped frame this so beautifully. Am I going to chalk it up to because they are off on a different angle because of the depth of the camera? No, they should be matching to some degree. Also notice she has a major hyperextension that can affect the line. Notice that it's tilting in with the set of tilting out. Those things change the aesthetic of the lotus that you're making. Also, their arms are a little bit too close together. I would say the ideal look would be my group right here. So out of all of them, if you're in a K-pop cover group and you're like, we want to do this, I would go with this group right here. That matches the overall aesthetic. Based on past experience that I've seen 1 million when they set choreography like this, that would be the angle that's the most visually pleasing when you have everybody involved. Now, going back from here, we have our third group take place. Now we're back down. We're riding more of the grooves on the tone here, which I really like the fact that we're hitting more of the other beats and creating really nice angles. I love the fact that we've branched from the Lotus over to something very jagged and geometric. It shows dynamics and diversity and it frames beautifully with their angles that they're presenting here. Of course, with the angle and the hinge of the body. I love it. Honestly, this is they're doing a great job. Everybody is pretty much having a flat back, but it goes back to the head. If everybody's head was in the right direction, this would be, I would have zero issues. There's actually not even issues with this. Just zero things to say about it in a good way. Meaning like I would have no, there would be no discrepancies to mention. I would just be like, that's great. Move on. You know? So <laughs> I think that's really cool. See, and it's leaning it over. Then they're resetting. Boom. That's another little influence that we've seen from the mega crew. And dropping it down, they drop down. Now everybody goes back into unison. We've seen this group here. I love this. Woom, woom, woom. Notice a little bit of it has a head iso happening there. Woom, woom, woom. And that's what gives it that animated appearance. Still having your feature in the front. Click, click, click. I do think there could have been some better refinement there. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Very clean and crisp, but we had a lot of extra movement happening from that. Could be lack of refinement. Could be quick turnaround time. Not sure. But I am, I, this is, Guys, this is a very, very impressive mega crew. Very impressive. It's, it literally feels like, because One Million's mega crew was so captivating, they definitely deserve the win with good reason, and I did a whole analysis on it. But this is really cool of the fact that this isn't a K-pop comeback. Wild to me. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this at all in the best way possible. This is so sick. That right there with the footwork, boom, doo -doo. really subtle transition, very effective though, and they peel out, boom. But notice the commitment of my outside frame that really helps maintain and provide a lot of a, a, a lot of um, levels, but notice they're not all doing the same thing. That's why it feels more complex is because even just the switching of the every other person that you see in this back frame, that allows you more uh, complexity opportunities in your shapes and it allows us to stay captivated because there's so much to digest, but not in an overwhelming sense, in a, I see it makes sense, and it's hard for me to process in the moment. Hence why I have to do it at 0.75, because there's literally so much to talk about.
Digging it down, boom, and the accent right there was so sick. Love that. Then having everybody come up, but they're still angled outward, you still see a natural sense of separation between the outside group and our inside group, even though everyone's on the same level. That is a really good thing. It's a proper way to bridge the gap between the two uh, groupings. You don't want them to just muddle together. You want there to be a clear sense of direction with both. I love that shining like a star. I do feel like this should have been a little bit more refined by just a couple people near that back end, but I really do like the choice. And I see a peel that's starting to happen from the back group to the front. Yeah, do 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 do. That was really cool to see all of that. Now look, we're now framed completely down, having our ITZY members in that center, having people framed to the outside. Look, them not looking really helps us see and showcase who we need to look at. That kick was so nice with the swing swing. Now we have our next feature showcase, but notice there's a level represented and we've gotten closer in the formation. It's still very refined, very proper in spacing, but it is definitely, you don't quite think, how do they, you think, how do they get there? But it, they, they didn't do anything that would overkill that. That little Dana Dana seat right here. Notice head matters. Really nice to see them look down because it allows us to really focus on who is obviously in this group. Because if these people were looking front, I would feel like, hmm, is there a choreography discrepancy? But because they are obviously looking down, some of them are really looking down with the shoulder, some are looking down with the head, that would be something to refine. But notice our back three are not looking down. So that is what helps us know there is a separation, doesn't just start here, it actually starts here. And that is a really, they did a really good job. I think I know it's probably a team that collaborated on this, which honestly, those are some of the best ones is when you have a full team collab, not just a single person. Because from personal experience very recently, working and collaborating with other people's perspectives is gonna help you create some really nice situations or complexity of content without, uh, uh, but also like ingraining fingerprints of who it's for. So that's that's just an overall note that I really empathize with and I really like the fact there's th this was not a one person show and you can see that and I love it. Mm. And that was really nice to have your back three go and bleed back up. I love the moment of having everybody go right back in into groove and they branch it out and then you have the up and the lower group swing with the arms notice there is a bit of a range discrepancy where they should be straight or bent some of them are a little off but notice our itsy members are facing front and everyone's facing side full commitment to your direction is what makes you be so captivated by moments like this mm. and then they're digging down still having a little bit of a geometric moment which is really nice because it tailors in what we saw in the beginning and having everybody nice and low, showing and paying respect to your performance. And they're nice and easy to spot even because one of them that's on the ground is front and everybody else is standing and everyone else is kneeling. So beautiful representation of your levels. I love it. The switch up was really nice. Now you have everybody, she uses a tiny little throw my front feature, allowing everybody to push more front, having people in the back be nice and tall having a bleeding moment through the phrase, really nice choice, having them do a little basket run over, but notice they're not doing both on the back, they have one over the other. I, I appreciate the attempts, because here's the thing, I'm always someone to say something about basket runs. They do make something cleaner, they make the transitions cleaner, but sometimes when you think about the overall context of a routine, I've said that about Just Jerks Mega Crew, uh, whenever you do a basket run to transition, like I've said, it does maintain cleanliness, but you have to be very mindful of, is it going to lower the complexity of content within scoring of, of whenever you score a mega crew, or is it going to contribute based on the concept or context of the before and after? So in this way, I appreciate the fact that we had one over the other. And because we did so much complexity before and after, that was a really nice, uh, you because you want a heartbeat, you don't want it to all be stagnant. That was a really nice dip in, in the choreography that allows breathability and digestibility. So I think that was really fun. And it didn't take them forever. They didn't use a whole eight count of their basket run. They only did for about four. So that's impressive. The heartbeat there, boom, woo doo doo. Really good job of using the shoulders, bringing it in, but it, you do notice, you know, 
everybody's interpreting it slightly different. That would just be an overall cleanliness note. Some people have it together, some have it separate. Always try to go off of the performer because they're the ones that are the focal point and it's their track. So having the performer, they have their arm together. Everybody should have their arms together. It's unison. Love that. Boom, doon, doon, doon. So notice the placement and everybody has to be on it because allowing this to happen, then allowing this moment to happen, math, the beauty and simplicity in numbers. Sometimes less is more. And in this case, less is more because notice the music and the timbre have dropped back a little bit. That allows us to really have a second and it gives them the opportunity to dial back as well. And that's what we've seen. Even though like there's not as many layers. Does that make sense? Of course, there's there's depth in the formation, obviously, just for the sheer number, but there's not a ton of layers. Everyone's on the same level. And that's what makes this so captivating is the synchronicity of the angles and the representation of the sequences. It feels like there's movement, a clear pathway of what they're doing, and it matches the music well. Bring it back in. The switch was nice. Do, 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 which I like. Just be mindful of my first performer. She's kind of over tilting, so they need to complete the line with the wrist. That's my overall note for everybody. Even the we were just noticing some, not issues, but there are differences here. Like you see right there. Uh, who else is doing it right there? Hers is a little too high. Hers, her angle of her elbow is a little too low. Hers is way too high right there. But it's, you notice one of their fingers is a little bit over tilted. So it's, it's really, really hard to get tutting right. And they're doing, I'm going to say this, even though I've made the discrepancies, they're doing a freaking great job of doing it here. The fact that I re remember 0.75 right now and I have it stopped. I didn't really catch it in the in the one time. So th give give the girls their flowers. This is amazing. Mm. That was nice. Boom. I'm not gonna stop it because of course we're gonna see just we're gonna see some major angle issues on that drop because that was a fixed point. And fixed points are supposed to maintain where they are. But even if in the setup it was off, it's gonna be way off when they drop down. So but seeing them kind of crawl up is a really cool choice. Tipping down. And they drop, and I love that where they have the dancers have one moment with them. Then the dancers drop all the way down, and they stay up. That was cool. Love that choice. Bringing it down with the switch, bringing it through with the crossover with the legs. I love that. Still have your itsy dancers where they are. Love the accent of the hand. For me, it's the details that really help carry your concept. So you notice the type of hand they did. They didn't have to do a hand, but they chose to do it, and it's how they chose to bring it. It's similar to how they set up their tuts. Boom, 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 right? And so because they've already established the type of aesthetic they want to have with their accents of their, of their um, angles, having it included here, even though the legs are the focal point, really makes it feel more complete. You know, and so I'm really very much a fan of of this in general. And I love that we're having our moment. I have a feeling, you know, here's the thing. Etsy's doing such a good job of being very clear where their formations are. It made me question by watching, even though I don't really know much about Etsy. I was like, there must be a fifth person because it is so clearly distinct that there is somebody missing right here. Do you know what I mean? In, in a lot of formations. And that's just kudos to them for their commitment of, of that. It's just, it's so nice. I love that right there. Boom, here. Boom, and then just the single rotation of the foot. That's a lot harder to do than you think because you have to think about your core, isolating this leg and thinking about this like rotating while this one stays where it is. It is pretty hard to, to lock that in. And also their hands are not really helping them as much. They have to rely upon their lower core to do that. And also a lot of times with your lumbar, which is your lower back, whenever you hit, you really have to think about that ice cream scoop of the core, uh, getting that belly button up to the back of the spine because some people are gonna use their lower back to kind of help with that and you want to avoid that because it's meant for stability it's not meant for mobility with your with your lumbar it's meant to like not be super flexible it's meant to be strong so I mean it is good to use to help you stay upright for stability sake but you don't want to use it too much for the sake of not using your core and a lot of people especially in like gymnastics stuff they struggle with that but here it's really small but long term that can affect you so I love that for her to have her moment. She's still having a sense of um, complementary movement happening with what they're doing. They're accenting the leg. She's accenting the upper body. I love it. They're dropping it down. Boom. They bring it in and then they slide over. And noticing we, it's very clear who is coming up as a three and a three symmetrical on both sides. I love it. Still having it repeat in the straddle. Just a couple of things. I would say they needed to be, be clear on doing a tuck 
to roll up instead of just get up because you're gonna see that some of the legs are up and that can affect the levels um, in, in comparison to if you tuck them very quickly on a particular time. But I really like this line that we saw here with the little accent of the hand. It's cute, having their moment, they twist it down, whoo, seen that before. I'm, te I'm telling you right now, this is me 1 million mega 2.0, literally. I wonder if Itzy's team were like, 1 million, can you make your mega crew but for this group? And they're probably like, say less. That's exactly what this looks like to me. I love the energy on that. Be born to be. Now, I think this is what's the most impressive thing about this entire thing. It's because the beginning was so refined, very technical, staccato, not a lot of legato in the groove, and there's not a lot of room for the thrusting of energy from the chest or the hips. Here, they completely just threw, not threw away, but they completely put on the back burner that, that militant, you know, with the accented claw, like, uh, aesthetic. They put that on the side, and they're just vibing out right here, and it feels so... It feels so cool. Like it works really well with the born to be because it's lower than what the other tones in the track are. So it makes sense why they're going a little bit lower and grimier because when you think about the progression of the tonal colors and the percussion and the sound production, it's a little bit more full. So you want to have more movement and involvement on the body to make it feel more full and having everybody do it makes it feel very powerful. So I love that. And it's also the texture shift and the pocket shift between doing something very stiff and still, but st and everything has a prime and proper place. And it's something that has more, um, it has more legato and griminess to it is really hard to do. And that's very, that's honestly the most impressive thing about this is the switch between the two, not just those things independently. And I love that. Now, does this part need more refinement? Yes, especially on the angles being integrated back in because you don't, because you're including a polyrhythmic pocket of the groove, it is a lot harder to bring that back in whenever you see the integration of the angles when you're used to not doing it with that pocket. So that's just an overall note though, but it's still, it's not a big enough discrepancy where I'm like, ooh, they need to work on that. No, it's a, this looks freaking great. And diving it in, that born to be, a born to be. And it's still legato, but it's different than that thrusting. It's more controlled, but it's still very full in range, and I really like that. Overhead, which is really nice. Boom, do 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 which is really nice. And let me let me tell you why that was impressive. Because uh, normally for me, whenever there's a lot of unison, you got to think about what's happening before and after the unison section to make it deemable of is this something that's impressive or is this something that it's we could have made a different choice because if you think about how much was going on not in a bad way but in a, a lot to take in a lot to digest way it was all complementary to each other but it was very deep and very wide so there's a lot to see when you notice the dynamics and there was so much and the level representation throughout the entire first verse, having a sense of unison with the numbers promotes a different level of feeding someone's curiosity or something that they may would want to see in a routine like this. You would want to have, like I said, the heartbeat. Not only do you want to captivate somebody from complexity of content, you also want to captivate somebody by your presence and stillness. You also want to captivate somebody by your formation choices and your utilization of ripples, cannons, and unison. You also want to showcase what it looks like for synchronicity, stability, and mobility, right? And also authenticity within the choreography that you're choosing to do. There's so many things that you can do in a routine to allow someone to digest it and process through it and make them enjoy the entire routine, not just the pocket of it. And this is a brilliant, brilliant example of that. It really is. So having this here, I do make a note. I am someone who prefers a one take, especially with megas, because it makes it more impressive by nature. When you do a one take in general, there is a lot of moving parts to it. The more people, the more areas that could go wrong. Am I more understanding of Mega Cruise doing multiple takes or having multiple cuts because of the, the essence of a dance practice in today's society of the K-pop realm? Yes, that's how I felt with Songong. For me, I appreciated what they brought to the table so much it didn't bother me near as much of the way of just cutting it. But 
even though this is my very first analysis with them, they showed within that first minute that they understand what's going on. And I'm being more forgiving on the logistics side than a stamina side. Do you know what I mean? They weren't showing fatigue or anything like that, nor does the choreography, I think, promote fatigue in the way, like at this point, for this type of training and stamina, I don't think they should be that fatigued. And it doesn't show it as that. Does that make sense? So I'm back to here. That's just my one note. Switching through, boom, do, 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 oh, da. I like that energy there, pulling it through. Now, this is another example of what made me think there must be a fifth member, because look how clearly defined she is in this formation. They're so freaking in their windows. There is obviously somebody that's supposed to go right here. Cheers to Itzy for the commitment to their formation and being so freaking clean there, because the dancers are whatever. If it was just them, you know what I mean? It's freaking great. I love that. Not like that, boom, doom, 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 doom. Very polyrhythmic, because they're hitting on the doom, doom, on the basses, and that's really hard to do if you're not used to it, because you're having, like, boom, to be doo doo. Switching between the tone that's riding more legato and then having a staccato in the back, that's what made that course so captivating on a unison scale, because it was such a different pocket than in the verse. But it's still polyrhythmic, it's still difficult, and it is complex regardless if you're only doing two things, but they're two things on two different rhythmic patterns. So that is difficult. And I I love it. This is wonderful. And I love that born to be. I love that dip there. And we're all peeling out our dancers to the side. Mm-hmm. And I love having that back group represent one of our one of our features. And then having our two established on the sides. So it does feel like we do have somebody in the back. This is one of those instances. I'm curious where that fifth member would go. Not sure. But I think it's still really fun. Just kidding. I know exactly where she would go. Right over here. Because they're so clear in how they're setting everything up. I love this little crowns up moment right there. I love the energy of pulling from the back. But they're also showcasing very well commitment of where your head goes. Great example. You see this, right? You know, when you have your Etsy members, they are, you still see their faces. But you don't see these guys' faces at all. Obviously because of the mirror. But if you take the mirror out, you can't see them. Then you have everybody here projecting and moving their energy forward. I love it where we're still properly framing, but we're not taking away from the beauty of what's happening in the center. Overall note those, notice the range of the arms are slightly off so that I could see some improvement. Also notice with one of our ITZY members, she I think is overturned because I think we're looking at more of that diagonal, but she's really catering more towards the, the side over here than the diagonal. So I would have her refine and match the angle that her other member is, and that would make it look a little bit more framed properly. But it is such a minor thing. It's not even an issue, honestly. That right there. It's nice to see them all pop up and then mull through. And also seeing them go boom, boom, really having their energy pushed down and then having everybody transition with the basket runs. This is an example. I'm going to go ahead and clock them on it. This is an example having the two hands right here to move down. If they just went back to here or they made a different choice instead of this, I think I would I would enjoy this part more. I think this is a wasted opportunity to do something different or innovative with their basket runs. I will always say that. I will die on that hill. <laughs> that's just life. The life of Mega Cruz is you're going to see basket runs. And that's the thing. And that's my point. Because when you're so used to seeing a mass number of people, we know that this is a very predictable, clean way to transition. So by doing one simple thing, like what I already referenced about having the crossover, that is what made it look more tasteful as a transition in comparison to this. This just feels like we have to get ready to be in our next spot. Do you know what I mean? So that would just be an overall note. Just like they made a very simple choice to have the hands cross over, making making a made me make a different choice or go back to that choice instead of having it in the traditional basket run way. That's just an overall note. Not enough to kill the routine, but it does add, it, it does give it that, it takes me back to the, oh, this is, you know, it feels like a, like a routine, not a whole story or concept, you know? So it's just an overall note. But I love this though. Like that was cool with the peel out. Notice they are, they're angling a little bit up more, right? And then having everybody here a little bit lower to match our feature. I love that. Having everybody run away. It's fun. But I'd say that these basket runs are a tad bit distracting from this moment because they're very predictable and they're not going low enough. 
but I love how it peels up one and they melt it just to keep and establish that level and then as everybody melts to the side I love that energy there my feature is the only one not doing arms that everybody else is doing arms that means the other dancers got to make sure is it here is it here is it here is it here those things make a difference what I'm noticing is it feels like it's supposed to be this position so that's just a note if you choose to do this choreo this would be the ideal position to do based on the choreo context of what just happened. They bring it through. Some people just drop the arms. Some people pull them through. That does matter in your range and in your timing. So now we have people walk up. That little do 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 do. And look, now we have this little. <laughs> this gets me every time. This whole two hands were layered and leveled up thing. I've seen in street dance girl fighter, street woman fighter. I've seen it in so much nowadays. I love it. But also, it's just, it's such a fingerprint to the K-pop world, is what it feels like. Or just the Korean dance world of choreography is this bad boy right here. I see it right here. And then, and honestly, One Mill was one of the first groups that I saw do this. And then I saw Adventure from Street Dance Girl Fighter Season 2 do it. I also saw Brand New Child from Season 1 of Street Dance Girl Fight, Fighter do it. I saw XG do it. So I, I'm, I've been seeing it in multiple facets of the industry, but the common denominator is it looks cool every single time. Doesn't bother me. It's just something that I will probably see and point out every time now because I see it so much. But it's still freaking cool. Love the feature here, having one of them drop down with the crossover really nice. And I love that we low-key have like a whole little sound wave happening. That's super dope. Having people on the floor, having my feature up, and then having her down. I actually really like this because it shows opposition. She is down and low, representing a lower on the performance side. But notice that people in the back are low. She is up nice and tall in opposition to the people with her. And she's in opposition to those who are creating a moment around her. And I... Chef's kiss to this formation. This is cool. Melting down and look, we are melting like a freaking, I don't even know. This is so cool and we're expanding and it just feels so thorough. And this one's expanding up in a spiral. This is oh, so good. And I love her energy right there. She pulls up and honestly, I feel like Itzy is like, they fit so well into this. I really feel that way. It's very, very collaborative in the sense of their feature moments don't stand out in a way where it feels displaced. It feels very appropriate because there's triggers happening. They're enmeshed within the formation. You see the transitions take place. So instead of having uh, your dancers have their feature moments, Itzy are those natural features that you're going to have throughout the whole thing. So it's the same people. But you would have these same moments regardless if Itzy was there or not, which shows that Itzy's placement in this is really, really nice. Now notice all of them are down and her having her moment and them all nice in a straight line. And in unison, boom, the hips and the chest are working in opposition. That's super dope. That melting down through too, very nice. I would say that's one of the cleaner lines we've seen, but obviously we do still have some discrepancies in the angle. Some people kind of threw it, some people are using their back, some people are not. So that would be something to clarify as well. The hitting on the snap, that right here to here, that is different than a throw. So it's really, I've been seeing that we are very clear on the type of throw it is because having the elbow to go up versus just throwing with the arm does respond differently to your timing and it responds differently to those around you. So I do like this choice, but some people put their arms in a little bit too early. Some still have them a little bit too far out, but I love the energy of the back. And I would say my feature is a little bit off center here, or maybe my dancer is too far in. It's one of those two things. And I love this boom boom. She compliments what they're doing in the front and then she peels it over to the side. Freaking sick. That acts up, boom, right there into the next section and they're peeling it down. God, this is gorgeous. This is freaking gorgeous. I love this so much because they bleed it over. Goodness gracious. And then from there, we're seeing choreography that's pretty familiar to us, but it's done in such a different way. This is so good. They bring it down. Oh, did you hear that bass? And they do that body roll down. And they bring it up, just that, just the range on, on the arms could have been refined, but that body roll was sick. And then having her feature in the center complement them is divine. I love having the opposition of have people up, have people down. It really helps tie in that very beginning with that spiral effect. I really like the circular motions happening with our features. This is great. Having the hands, that matters, curling it out and in. There's a taste to this. It's fun to have this moment. They come up nice and... Fun. Yeah, boom, let's go, boom. 
Then, of course, we have our second cut, which doesn't bother me. Not as much, um, but it's still really freaking fun. Yeah, born to be and born to be. Really nice. I'd say my first course, I think, was a little bit tailored better here than here, but it's still really nice to see. I can tell what's going on. But notice we have a rogue hand hanging out over here, so just be my little note from that dancer. Mmm. I love that. Notice that they did an add-on. Well, not add-on, just a ripple. So having them go, then they had just a little pause, changing of a bevel, and then they also switched to the other side. That is cool. Love it. And then we dip it down. I love that born to be switch. Born to be really fun. It builds really well. This is a great course choreo. Huh. <laughs> And uh, let me say this note, though. I mean, honestly, it may be something where I try it myself. I don't know. But this type of choreography works really well because of the number of people that are doing it. If it was by itself, it could come across a bit stagnant in some places. But because of the numbers, it gives you so many options. And the numbers are utilized. That's why it's so freaking captivating is because you have the numbers with the content, the content has a lot of angles, direction, and dynamic and how it's executed. Now, do I think that the choreo looks fine by itself? I would believe so, but what makes it so wow or match the tone of the track is not isolated to just the content. It's the overall picture of the formations, dynamics with the cleanliness of the content. It's all collaborative. Transition of the switch, do 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 do. Having everybody dip down, notice some are using their body, some are using their head. I think the head would make that look really nice. Ta da da, bringing it up. I love the marches in the back. Shows professionalism, dripping this down. That boom, do do do. Love the syncopation for that. It was fun. That led right there, boom. Here, over that pop, boom. Did you see that? That chest pop? <laughs> that was good. The B. You can hear, even with Itzy, and that's the thing, Itzy doesn't stick out at all, which shows their competency within the craft. Love it. Love it. Not only that, though, with how they chose to do this, there's really nice moments where you hear that doom doom, that sound, and they hit it, but it doesn't really stop or break the overall groove or isolation that they're trying to do. And I'm very much a fan of that. And I love the born and boom, there's our third cut. So for me, I personally, any more cuts happening after this point, I would feel it's a tad bit of an overkill. I think we should be able to get it within probably three, you know, like, like have a mix of three, at least some big chunk sections, you know. I go off of, if it's a five minute routine, no more than three cuts. I, I just feel that way, uh, but I get it. <laughs> And I like how everybody's down, but now we still have our uh, our outside. But notice, it is not a straight line. It is a curve. And I think that's just so nice and refined. And I love the X that's happening. And everybody is having the X. But it feels like something was happening on the outside. I don't know what it was. I need to go back and see what it is. Oh, 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 oh. Everyone's supposed to shoot up and drop, but notice some of them struggle to finish the or start the rotation. That's what I caught. And it was the outside coincidentally on the symmetry. So that was interesting that the ones who actually didn't quite get there the way everybody else did, they, they were symmetrical on both sides and it was both two people on both sides. So that was kudos to if they put people in the formation because they saw that and caught that. Claps to you. But seeing this, they're dipping it down. They, Etsy's having their moment. And everybody is complimenting it, do, do, doing little focal points or little accents to help extenuate what they're doing in their content. And I love it. Yeah. Da -da 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 -hell. And they switch. Love that. Dipping it down. Boom. And they bring it down. Love it. The switching over. Do, do, do. Gah, sick. Sick. Having that moment. Do, 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 do. Boom. <sighs> Melting with the legs. It's just there's so much. And they go hit, hit, hit. It was a ripple happening around the back, but we still got some lower body happening to help tailor for the legs that we saw a little bit earlier. Love the cohesion of this routine so much. I do. Bring it back in. Now we have that boom, shh, boom. You were building up the energy, and they have to build it with the music. You can't just let the music go off and do whatever they want. You have to hold it down with cleanliness, just like you've established from the first two and a half minutes. You have to make sure that's still there, but you have to keep building. You can't keep doing the same things because then those things will become stagnant. And that's what they do. They build it really well. 
with a kick, do 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 do, with a triple kick, and not a single one of them looked like they were doing that kick, and they ain't supposed to be. So that was good. Now everybody's back to that straight line, melting it down. I love this with the columns. Now for me, you know, I'm I'm an individual. I think I, I mentioned this about just jerk. Whenever you deal with columns. You have to be careful to not make it look too similar to that. It was that French guy who did the one person with all these tutting arm angles and things like that. But when I saw this initially, it didn't quite see it that way, which is good. I love when multiple levels are established in a column, but people can be really susceptible to tapping into what he was doing with the tuts. Um, and that can, that can kind of teeter between inspiration and copying a little bit or biting. I love that. This part was really cool when that was probably one of the coolest little musicality moments. So seeing that again, we're here, they go drops down and it goes. Mm. That was a very simple move that they did, but the numbers, they use the numbers to their advantage to help represent that sound. And that was beautiful usage of numbers to musicality. Chef's kiss to that. And then everybody having their moment, having everybody go up and branch out. Now, this is another instance where I don't know where their fifth member would be here, but I still very much like this. Having them go and mirror out. This was honestly, this whole section I think is one of the cleaner ones before this. So if you go back when they clap their hands, this was really nice. Three, four, where their head goes, boom, boom, three, four. Nice, and they go clap it, bringing it back in. It's really nice to see, but then once we have it up, everybody's nice and strong here, but when they fold it down, different choices. This is really good because I can tell they're obviously trying to be individualistic because everyone in front of them or behind them are making obviously different choices, not just with the angles of the arms, with their head placement too. And that is something that can showcase individuality, but synchronicity and replication of dynamics. I love this. I absolutely love this because the only people who are dancing in unison are Itzy. I would say one of our members is a little bit off on her arms, but that's nothing crazy because there's so much going on. This was cool. I love this moment where you have one group, boom, boom, and then the other group responds by finishing out the illusion. I think that was the great usage of the every other. And then they reverse it. That was so, so fun. And then having your members go to the front, having their moment, noticing it's more full, boom, da, 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 da. They're doing a great job holding it down with just them four, and they're framing it very well with the staccato that we've already seen throughout, but it was done in a different way. There's those basket runs again. Honestly, they could have just folded it and it would have been fine. Having these four, having their moment, which I love, holding it down very clean, having your dancers come right back in, and they all match in energy, very impressive. And they go down, da-da-da-da-da. So they went from something very stiff and still and staccato to more of a legato vibe, more feminine pocket of the groove. I love it. This are, I love this group, Born to Be. Boy, it's, that's really hard to actually get people to rotate the hip at the same time. So that's in one of the most impressive grooves I think I've seen in this entire thing, which there's a lot to be impressed about, but that groove in isolation is really difficult to get multiple people to do well and cohesively. And that, and, and you obviously see that here. And then look, we're back to our little flower pods. Do, 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 do. Really great way to open and finish. And notice instead of it being like a uh, like a 3D kind of pod, they make they use the shape of the crossing over to make more of that animated 2D look of a flower. And they're there and they sit down like they're in little thrones. Guys, I talked so much watching this one and rightfully so. If there's a really good chance saying this right now because this was my first one, did I spoil myself? I think I did. This is a phenomenal phenomenally well done routine shout out to one million because i know they're the ones who did it because they're shot at one million studio they got the space for it and this read so similarly to one mil mega that it has to be them that do it or you're going to run into a really big biting problem because there was a lot that i was able to see that was fingerprinted from what we saw from street woman fighter is that a bad thing no i think it's great i love seeing the crossover but it would be a bad thing if one million was not the ones a part of this project but i would be shocked if they weren't this was incredible and it makes me very excited to potentially pursue looking at any other itsy routines even though i know the scale may not be quite like this seeing their competency within this particular side of the craft makes me excited to see what other avenues and concepts and content that they bring to the table as well
What a whirlwind, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I was helpful in some way. If you are a fan of ITZY or you're a fan of K-pop in general, I hope to have more ITZY on my channel in the future. I think that would be great. But at this point in time that I'm recording this, I am doing an XG marathon as well as an ATs marathon. And I had just recently finished my 17 K-pop marathon. All of those things are exclusively on Patreon, but I do have a couple of those already released on YouTube if you want to go check those out. If you are someone who just likes dance content in general, I do too. And I love analyzing anything from uh, the Americas to uh, China, Japan, Korea, anywhere and anything dance related that has people passionate about it. I love looking at it. So thank you guys again for taking the time to watch and I'm Jess and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye!